son, my young detective, but it is all for naught, for you shall not defeat the mighty Dr. X. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the trophy! Give me all the trophies! I am the most powerful person in the world! Look at me! Look at me! I'm growing! I'm tall! I'm everything! You can't just leave him there to be blown to bits. <laughs> mysterious disappearance, Dr. X hasn't been seen or heard from. Who knows where he may strike again? The doctor's ruthless henchmen return to their regular jobs as busboys once the octopus were removed from their heads. They plan on opening a sushi restaurant someday. The extrasensory octopus went on to graduate from Hoover University with teaching degrees. What do they teach? Marine biology, of course. Martin, the lab assistant, after a stint of community service, obtained his Ph.D. from Hoover University. Opting for a less stressful occupation, he now works for a major fireworks manufacturer. Martin's uncle, the museum janitor, won the state lottery and is now a multi-millionaire. In other words, he's still cleaning up. After a falling out with the janitor, the broom went on a national tour, ending with sold-out performances at Carnegie Hall. He's sweeping the nation. Maggie Mead is still organizing her way through Boulder Canyon. What can I say? Some things never change. Jimmy doesn't like it when people talk about him. So let's move on. Bernie returned to the Hoover Daily News, where he won the Pulitzer Prize for his in-depth article on bovine beverages and the duality of man. B.F. Skinny became a talk show phenomenon, crossing the country to do show after show. Why the attraction? As he points out, why not? I'm a talking rat. Joe Habit, fifth grade detective, received national attention and recognition for foiling Dr. X. But she didn't let it go to her head. She's finishing school, still fighting crime, and always on the trail of the elusive Dr. X.